Hi, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, uh, should I say, let's talk a little about what happened last night. I understand that the security forces in Jamaica had to go to the prime minister's house to sort of create a security, uh, you know, security presence there due to unknown threats, that there was seemed to have been some form of intelligence, that there was threat on the life of the Jamaican prime minister, um, Mr. Andrew Holness. We are not sure because the papers have not suggested what sort of threats um, that could have been. But, you know, as I have a fertile mind, I think geopolitics, and I think that we have been enmeshing ourselves in the things that we should not be enmeshing ourselves and being engaged with. And I talk about the deployment of the Jamaican military and security forces to Haiti. Now, I understand through the great line sources um, that this has not yet been confirmed that Jimmy Cherizer, who is the head of the gangs, as it were, in Haiti. I am not sure if this is true, but I understand that he has been sending threats to Jamaica and Belize for having dispatched, for having deployed, deployed rather, soldiers to his country, um, ID. Now, that's something that is very interesting, and we wonder if there is some correlation here, if there is some connection. Now, if it is, it, if it is true, that the life of the president of the prime minister of Jamaica is under threat, then how would he be able to defend the country and himself without you know, the contingency of military presence in Jamaica? We don't have a large military, right? And we are not constantly under threat. But if we put ourselves under threat in terms of in harm's way by defending other interests that we should not be defending, because I'm sure whether or not Cherizier has sent um, out any sort of threats to Jamaica, it really should tell us that the Haitians would not be particularly happy with what is happening um, in their country and the fact that Jamaicans, their next door neighbors, are actually sending troops and are supporting imperial interests, that's US and other countries' imperial interests in Haiti. Of course, it is not our interest. We're not defending democracy as we have been told. What we are defending in Haiti is US hegemony and imperialism. Now, since Andrew Honus has ascended to office, he has been doing the bidding of the United States. We realize that everything the United States, he's a yes man for US imperialism. And we saw that on the Trump, when you know the whole Mar-a-Lago situation happened um, with regard to Venezuela, he was right on board to do the bidding of the United States. Whether it's the Republicans or the Democrats under Joseph Biden, that's a, the, the Biden-Harris administration, he's now sending troops to Haiti or has already deployed troops to Haiti. Now, it seems to be that the prime minister believes that he is going to be important for doing these things. Now, one of the things that Jamaica needs to understand, all Jamaicans need to be concerned about, is the fact that where there is spilled blood, we are going to be held responsible, right? The, not only the prime minister and the members of government, but the entire Jamaican citizen will be held accountable for any shed blood in Haiti. We should not get ourselves involved in that sort of affair. We must understand that consequences follow our behavior. And we have made the wrong decision to have done that. That's not our uh, sort of responsibility to meddle in the affairs of another country. We, the Constitution does not support that, I'm sure. But talk about the Constitution of Jamaica. When we look at our country, our own country, that is under security threats by domestic terrorists, by domestic hoodlums, 
Why are we sending troops? Why have we deployed troops to Haiti when we should be actually taking care of matters in Jamaica? And I'm wondering, when we think about what is happening, let me turn this thing off. When we think of what is happening in Haiti, we should be concerned about what the developments of things in Jamaica, because the, the commission, the Integrity Commission report, the Integrity Commission's report, you know, has is not a very wonderful document, I should say the least, if I should say the least. I don't think it's a document that has exonerated. It seems to have exonerated and reformness of corruption charges of illicit enrichment. But it's because political tribalism and political corruption are so much embedded into our culture that sometimes we wonder if we can ever reduce it or get rid of it. I'm, I'm sure we can't get rid of it, but I'm sure we can't even reduce it because it is the air that we breathe. And that is how the system is set up. But it's interesting that the prime minister is able to have received intelligence about security threats to his life and perhaps to his family's lives. We, we hope that nothing happens, right? But we can't get intelligence on the snuffing out of citizens' lives because we know that hundreds of thousands of citizens' lives have been snuffed out over the decades, over the years, particularly since we gained independence from Great Britain. And nothing has become of it. But the prime minister's life is well protected because there are many Jamaicans, you know, when we talk about that we are all equal under the law, in Jamaica that is not so. We're not all equal under the law. That is just on theory, in theory, it's on paper, but it's not true because as soon as there is a security threat to the prime minister's life and the life of his family, it is heard and proactive actions are taken to avert any sort of occurrence. But if it were an ordinary citizen like you and myself, nothing would have happened. Perhaps we, our lives would have been snuffed out and funeral processions would have followed and that's it. Next victim and life goes on because that is how the show is run in Jamaica. The citizens' lives there, the citizens' lives are not important in the eyes of our politicians. And that is why they do not have a viable crime plan to tackle crime and violence, because they know that they are quite fine. Now, Mr. Honus has to be very careful about his involvement in imperial interests, because not only will his family members be impacted, but he himself will be impacted. He might be made rich, and he might like the abundance of the the um of 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 wealth and of fame, but he must understand that consequences do follow. I remember distinctly watching Mr. Siago just before he died, giving a lecture at the University of Technology about Jamaica's the history of Jamaica's music and you know entertainment culture. And when he realized that our fullest potential had not been attained, he cried in front of the public. And I'm sure that Mr. Siago, at his age, at that age, was reflecting and reflecting deeply and understanding that he contributed to the fact that we had not attained our fullest potential. Because of his involvement, Mr. Manley's too involvement in violence, in criminality. That is why they were always at the funerals of these well-known criminals. We ought not to forget these histories. Sometimes we glorify our leaders and we forget that both political parties have often been connected with violent people and acts of violence. They are not innocent. And that is why they do not have the wherewithal. They do not have the capacity. They do not have 
any sort of plan or intention to solve the crime monster because it is a profitable industry. I've been saying that it is a profitable industry. But we we're hearing that the prime minister was at home and he was sur surrounded by security forces to protect his life because his life is more important than the lives of ordinary Jamaicans. Because after all, he's the prime minister. And of, of, I'm not suggesting that the security forces should not have been proactive and they should not do all within their power and, and means to protect the prime minister. However, I am suggesting to Mr. Hulkas that he needs to understand that the citizens of Jamaica, the ordinary citizen of Jamaica is equally important and he ought to find ways and means of developing proper intelligence infrastructure so that a lot of the crimes that are committed in Jamaica can be averted before they even take place because that is what is happening to him. But I'm particularly appealing to the Prime Minister that he needs to rethink his position on Haiti. We should leave Haiti alone and let the United States and its allies solve that problem. We already have problems with crime and violence and we cannot leave our homes dirty and unkempt to go and clean up the mess in another man's house. This is our house. Jamaica is our home, our house. We ought to clean that house up first. If we do not, then that's a sign of insanity. How can you leave your house filthy to go and clean up another man's house? Does that make any sense to you, Mr. Holness? You, you seem not to be thinking, and it seems to me that Mr. Honus is drunk with the gifts and the regalias and all of the things that he's getting from these people. But you must understand that these gifts come at a cost, and a heavy cost too, not only to you, but to the citizens of Jamaica. And I appeal to Jamaicans to read also and stop talking about having many views this postmodern thing read as much as you can acquaint yourselves with the different arguments but you must be on the right side of history because at the end of the day truth only is connected to one view whether we like it or not it's very hard to think but that is what it is you make a decision for good or for bad and you saw what happened during the pandemic there are many views during the pandemic but only one view was correct. Is either what you were taking was effective or it was ineffective. Many views. And the same thing is happening right now in our political realm, in the political world. Some of you are so attached to your political party that you're not able to see beyond the truth or not be able to see beyond what they're saying actually because you should be able to see the truth but you can't look beyond the veil to see what is happening you can't look beyond your views that you are holding and that you think make you brilliant and intelligent and smart it's not he who has a lot of views is, is smart you know, or wise is a person who makes the right decision that is wise so even if you have not exposed yourself to all of the views in the world. But if you know that you are on the right side of history, that you that what you're defending is the truth, then you don't need to even know the other views. It's nice to know them. So if you want to be able to convince and to present compelling arguments, it's strong, it, it makes the truth even stronger. However, we must understand that the world is moving at a rapid pace. And there are decisions that we have to make right at the given moment. Remember now in 2019, this thing just came upon us, 2020. And we had a very short space of time to decide what side we were going to place ourselves on. And many people in the world place themselves on the wrong side of history and, are, and have been sickened or have, or have died. 
And I'm not going to here present arguments to you about, you know, what happened. You know what happened. And the system is not going to allow me to speak the truth. Huh? The system here, this platform, is not going to allow me to speak the truth. So you know what happened. And it is for you also, those of you who have not acquainted yourself with the truth of what happened four years ago, you need to do so because these are issues that are still at play and we're seeing them in the politics right throughout the world. The controversy is still there, is still potent. And you must know what the real controversy is. You must know what the real issues are in this global conflict in this global geopolitical conflict. It's a chess game and you've got to acquaint yourselves with it and stop saying, oh, God help me. God help will help those who are willing to be taught and who are willing to learn. And there is a trove of information with which you can acquaint yourselves. But that is what I wanted to say because the Gleaner and the Observer reported that the Prime Minister was under security threats. Um, I don't know where that might be coming from. Remember now that I'm not suggesting that it is definitely as a result of his deployment of troops to Haiti, but it might be connected. It might be connected because I'm sure that the gang members, as well as even decent citizens of Haiti and the Haitian diaspora are not impressed with what Jamaica has done. And I can't blame them because we, our house is not clean. We do not smell well. So why are we going to Haiti to bring about law and order when in Jamaica there is no law and order? And that's why we're having problems with crime and violence because there is a lack of law and order and decency and civility. And that is why we had, the PNP had on the platform Vibes Carter, because they understand the pulse of the culture that we embrace criminality. If it were that we were a more civil society, I don't think Vibes Carter would have made a prominent um, presence at the recently held PNP conference. I don't think he would have. He would not be a prominent member of any civil society, any decent society. He would be forced to become a decent person because he can. Vibes Carter has made the decision to be a person who evinces that sort of criminal disposition. That's his choice. So when people are thinking that, wow, Vance Cartel is free, yes, he's free. And he has made his decision to dress and to behave in the unseemly manner in which he behaves. That is his choice. But it does mean, therefore, that we should allow our citizens to imitate such depraved behavior and mannerisms. But we have, in the name of accommodating different views, right? And your view is not necessarily the correct view. My view, if he's being tattooed and he's having these symbols and he's evoking this sort of criminal behavior, nothing is wrong with that because that is his way of thinking. This is the post-modern world in which we live, where everything is relative and there is no particular value. There are no sets of values that we should be beholden to. And that is why we're having problems with lawlessness in Jamaica, anarchy in the land. Yeah? That's why we're having problems. So Mr. Martin, Prime Minister, it is time for you to come clean with us about this deployment of troops to Haiti. Why have you not had a crime uh, uh, plan? You said that you just recently uh, completed a, a post-doctorate uh, degree 
and you write a thesis according to what we have been told. And that had to do with crime and violence and the inflows of guns into Jamaica. What is your crime plan? I would like to see you on TBJ, on CBM, articulating clearly what your crime plan, what did you find in your research on the inflows of drug, uh, guns and drugs in Jamaica? What did you find? What were your findings? And what is your, or what are your viable plans? What are your viable crime strategies to stem crime and violence in Jamaica? Because all you do is talk. All Mr. Cornish does is talk and tell the criminals that, you know, we're coming for you, we're coming for you. And the more you tell the criminals that you're coming for them, it's the more anarchy, the more menace that they create in the society, the more deaths that we see. Because it's you, as you challenge them, they challenge you. And they, they tell you that they run the show and not the legal government in Jamaica. At least what we think is a legal government. Right? These are some thoughts I had to bring to the fore. It's time for us to think as a nation. And we're not thinking. We're not a thinking people. Right? We have too many views. It's time for us now to look at the views that we have and to shortlist those views and also to come up with those views that will help us to move forward. We can't move, we can't move forward with all views and a multiplicity of views that are not here nor there. Because it seems to me we're so opinionated as a people. And nothing is wrong to be opinionated, but we must have the right opinions, the opinions that matter, the opinions that are progressive and will help to push our nation forward. And we have not yet come up with these opinions because that's why we're lagging behind. And we're not much better than Haiti if the truth be told. We're desperate, we're poor, we're uncivilized uncivilized, I should say. Yeah, we're uncivilized. That's, that's the word, right? Right? We are uncivilized. As much as we like to think we are very important in the world, we are not. And last night I was responding to someone on a video that I had uploaded and I was telling her that yes, we have created this global culture, but it's a culture of violence, a culture of Illiteracy, should I say, right? A violent culture that we are proud to have dispersed to the world. An uneducated society, an uneducated and unsophisticated culture, unrefined culture that we have exported to the world that we are proud of. And this is the problem with Jamaica. We're proud of something that we are crying about at the same time. You can't have your cake and eat it at the same time. Just like having Vibes Carter on the platform, showcasing a man that has been controversial as regards crime and violence. Many allegations surrounding his name. And yet still we say that we are serious about solving crime and violence while we're embracing it, right? It's the same thing about our culture. We are very happy about our global culture, but much of it is an unrefined culture. And yes, so when people meet Jamaicans and they're asking, are you Jamaican? And you say, yes, because you sound intelligent. They say, wow, you don't sound Jamaican because to sound Jamaican, you have to curse and you have to use a lot of ghetto and, you know, have to show that you are this sort of bad, 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 bad man, right? This rude boy culture that the Bob Marley's created, the rude boy culture. But you're happy about Bob Marley. Let's get to get the ram, feel all right. Yes, because that is the culture that you like. At the same time, we ought not to be then offended when somebody thinks that Jamaica is an illiterate society. And its people, the majority of its people are not intelligent, are not civil, are not refined, are not sophisticated. 
because we don't embrace that sort of culture. We want the wealth. We want the privileges. We desire to have the benefits of an educated society, but we do not have the, the, the will and the desire to educate ourselves and to move away from this rude boy culture that we have intentionally created and are proud of. We are proud of that culture. And that is why we promote these entertainers, right? I've heard to end the video of good music being created like by the Tessa and Jens and other entertainers that we have there. Do you think that they would have brought up a Tessa and Chen at the PNP? Do you think they would have brought up another decent entertainer? Because the Sanchin doesn't carry, she's oh yeah, she's popular, but she doesn't carry the weight and she doesn't have the influence on young minds as a vibes cartel does. And she sings clean lyrics, speaks intelligently, is refined, is sophisticated, is what Jamaicans should, Jamaican young ladies should want to emulate in terms of being a person. She's not perfect. But that those are the sort of the values that we should be promoting to the world. But instead, our most famous artists, for the most part, are the unsophisticated ones. And these are the ones that we tend to show a lot of deference to. Hmm? When are we going to grow up as a society and understand that is not enough is enough and that we cannot have our cake as Mr. Patterson, Mr. Polis is doing and eat it. You cannot get yourself enmeshed in trying to create order in a country when you have a lawless and a society that has no order, right? And Mr. Andrew Holness has not done anything in his eight years of being prime minister to create any sort of law and order in Jamaica. He has not attempted to do that. He has tethered himself to this materialistic form of culture. And that is why people are questioning right now, how did Andrew Holness become rich so quickly? That's why they're questioning. They don't believe in what you do because they realize that the country is, is poor. They re realize that the IMF um, agreements have not been agreements that have moved us forward. How can you be so wealthy and you have so many poor people around you? How can you live in that mansion in the hills and you're coming from the bowels of the working class and you have gotten so rich so quickly? And these are the questions that Jamaicans are asking. And they're not asking because they're bad by. They're asking because these are legitimate questions. These are critical questions for you to answer. And you have not answered, neither has the Integrity Commission's report. Right? But now we're hearing that your life is under threat. Is it because, you know, let me say something here, because I have to end this video. Right? And I love to talk, right? So you realize that I love to talk. So let me talk because I need to also unwind and to release the sort of intellectual juice or intellectual juices <laughs> in my mind. The intellectual juices, there's too much, it's flowing and I have to release it, right? But, but Andrew Holness, and I just forgot what I want to say. So I think I should end the video. I think I've said enough. I think I have said enough. Enough is enough. Jamaicans have been suffering for too long and the successive prime ministers, successive administrations, PNP and JLP have not done enough to solve Jamaicans' intractable, Jamaica's intractable problems. They have not done enough. And I don't think they're even attempting. I don't think they, they, are, they have even begun. But Mr. Holness came in as this guy who was of my generation to change things, 
and instead he has only worsened the problems that we face in modern Jamaica. I wish the Prime Minister and his family well. I hope that they are not under serious threats. I hope these are just allegations and their matters not to be taken seriously. But Jamaicans have to be vigilant. Be vigilant. Be aware of what is happening around you. Question everything that you hear, that you see, that you think. Right? Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and share and leave a thoughtful and intelligent comment at the end of the video. See you then. All the best.